Now, Shannon, tell us about your lupus diagnosis. How old were you when it was diagnosed, and what were your symptoms? Um, I was about uh, 24 years old, and um, it was in 2008, and I was diagnosed um, I was actually diagnosed in, with lupus in 2008, but my first symptoms started in 2002 when I was 24. Um, I had extreme fatigue, and um, being an elite athlete, I knew that that was very unusual. Um, and so I went in and saw a doctor, and saw multiple doctors through the next couple years, and it took about six years for me to finally get diagnosed with, with lupus. Um, and in that meantime, I definitely was playing on the national team, um, had played in my first World Cup and World Olympics, and um, was trying to manage um, as best I could the disease while playing. And you continued playing at the highest level in spite of the fact that you had lupus? Yeah, I did. It was very difficult. Um, Lupus is one of those that, diseases. That, that's, that's very uh, miraculous, really. Oh, so you're you. to be congratulated for doing that. Thank you very much. It was not easy, um, and um, I definitely, you know, any advice I can give is just to be really open and honest with your doctors. And I was very quiet about my disease to most everybody, um, and so my doctor became my most important ally in figuring out what was best for me so that I could do something that I loved. Okay, well, that, that's, that's very miraculous. Thank you. Dr. Gonzalez, mm -hmm. why is diagnosing lupus so difficult? Yes, um, lupus is a very complicated disease, and it can affect any organ, uh, joints, skin, um, kidney, and, and many of the symptoms are not very specific, um, so it can mimic other diseases, sort of complicating the picture for the physician and for the patients to be able to put everything together. Um, Additionally, there are no blood tests to diagnose lupus, so there's no yes or no, you have lupus, and, and it takes a long time to sort of put all those symptoms together. And Shannon's story is actually quite, unfortunately, it's quite typical that patients go on for many years before they finally get an answer. Um, but it's important that Shannon always was communicating with her physician and sort of trying to get to an answer and figure out what was going on. And what should patients be on the lookout for? Uh, to know that they might have the, 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 the disease. Is it similar to the symptoms that Shannon had? Yeah, Shannon had a, a few of the most common symptoms such as fatigue, uh, joint pain. Some patients have rashes in response to the sun. They can have hair loss. Uh, so there's so some of those are, are again, very uh, nonspecific and can mimic other diseases, but it's important to sort of put them all together and for patients to really be their advocates and talk to their physicians to understand what's going on. And uh, the butterfly rash is something that one hears about. Is that common or not common? It is quite common in lupus. It's actually a good clue for physicians in order to get to a diagnosis. I see, okay. And Shannon, how has uh, your life been since you uh, ended your experience as a soccer player and I must say an outstanding soccer player uh, as an Olympian. Yeah, um, it was a great part of my life and it's just gotten so much better in the last three years of, um, you know, I have two great kids, three and six months, three years old and six months and, and they keep me super busy. Um, I have realized how much more important it is for me to stay strong and to stay healthy and, and to keep up with, um, you know, my disease and for them. And so again, it's being that self-advocate, making sure I truly understand and I'm listening to my body each and every day. I, I live with lupus every single day still. And even when you're in remission, you still have those symptoms of exhaustion and, and joint pain. And um, you know that's kind of where I'm at right now, but you can learn to manage um, with the help of your doctors, with the help of friends and family, the support that you have really can help you manage your disease so that you can have an active and independent life and I've been able to do that so far. That's wonderful. Uh, now for my Health Power audience, I want them to know that 9 out of 10 lupus patients are female. Uh, they're three times more common in African American women than in white women and they're twice as more common in Asian and Hispanic women. I think that's an interesting thing 
that presumably relates to both genetics, mm -hmm. uh, but in any event, it's an interesting uh, piece of information to have. Uh, now, Dr. Gonzalez or Shannon, where can people go to get more information or get more help on managing their lupus? Um, and it's a great question. There's so many resources out there now, um, a lot more than when I was going through my diagnosis. And, and one great tool is usinlupus.com. Um, I'm sorry, say it again. It's uh, us? usinlupus.com. Okay, us, I-N? I-N, yep. Mm -hmm. Usinlupus.com. Lupus.com, okay. Yeah, and it's a great resource because it gives you those skills and tools. Um, to, to use um, to go to your doctor so that you have uh, more confidence when you are at your doctor's. They have a symptom tracker, they have a journal to keep all your notes. Um, so it's really important to have those skills and, and then the confidence to, to take to your doctor to manage your symptoms and manage your disease. Now one other thing, you have become a lupus advocate. How did you decide to do that and what do you do as a lupus advocate? Um, you know, it was while I was playing soccer, I realized um, I had a chance to use my voice for something really good that had nothing to do with soccer. And I know at that point I'd been keeping my disease a secret and I felt that it was the right time for me um, to open up about it and to tell my story to maybe help that next person, to get them maybe to a doctor a lot sooner than I was able to go to the doctor and just to give them the confidence that they can lead an active and independent life um, if they can manage their symptoms. And today I'm just so excited that I'm here partnering with GSK on Lupus Awareness Month, which is in May. Uh, World Lupus Day is May 10th. Um, and we just wanna really yes. keep, you know, making sure that people are aware of what lupus is and what they can do. Okay, well both of you, Shannon and Dr. Gonzalez, let me thank both of you for sharing this information with me and with my Health Power uh, audience. I'm sure it will be helpful for them, and Shannon, continue to stay healthy Thank you. and to advocate for lupus. I will. Thank you so much for, for um, obviously being a part of this yeah. and spreading awareness. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Okay. Have a good day, both you of too. you. You too.